Hey guys, welcome to Neat Movie News. My name is Dean Thomas, and we are a little over halfway through 2016, and I've seen a lot of people asking the question of what are the best movies so far this year up to this point. So I'm going to count down my top five movies thus far through the first half of 2016. I normally do ten, but since we're only halfway through the year, I thought I'd only do five. My list will probably surprise some people. It surprised myself, I'm sure, and it was a pretty hard list to come up with. And I think some people might be a little upset with my list, to be completely honest with you. That's that's for, that's fun. Jump in the comments. Let me know what your list is. And if there's a movie in particular, I think I probably know which one it is that uh, I left off my list. So let's start off with number five, 10 Cloverfield Lane. This is a movie I had no idea. A lot of us had no idea what it was when, when it was even coming out. Suddenly that trailer dropped online about a month before the movie release. <laughs> Hardly told you anything. And once you see the movie, the trailer really only gives you the first 20 minutes anyway. So there was so much in this movie that you just didn't know what was going to happen, you didn't expect, which built the tension up. Which the best part about it is of this movie is the tension. It's such a small story of these three characters down in a bunker, John Goodman's taking them kind of prisoner, saying that there's a war coming, that he's going to help them. And the whole movie, you really don't know whether he's a good guy or a bad guy, what his purpose is, what his intentions are. And it's just the way that, one, he plays it because he's so off-putting. He's so weird and creepy. But then you got Mary Elizabeth Winstead who carries you through this movie as the main character who kind of gets trapped in this bunker. She has no idea what's going on in the outside world like a lot of us. And I think that's what plays so well. There's so much mystery and suspense. And the word tension really is the perfect word to describe this movie. And I have never even seen the original Cloverfield, so I, and I still haven't. So I really didn't know what to expect at all. And where I thought the ending was a little forced, they clearly that was just so they could throw the Cloverfield name on it and brand it. It still worked within the story and it still made sense with the story they had building up the whole time. But regardless, the first hour and a half had me so just into this movie. I was so locked in and I came out like, wow, I did not expect that. And I really love 10 Cloverfield Lane, so it's my number five. Number four is a movie that I'm sure is going to surprise a lot of people and I'm sure a lot of you guys haven't seen based on the box office. But that's Eddie the Eagle. Based on the true story of Eddie Edwards, who was an Olympic British ski jumper, played by Taron Egerton, Hugh Jackman's also in this movie. Now, this movie isn't a hard-hitting drama like some kind of real, like, real, based on true events sports movies are. But it doesn't matter because you care about Eddie so much because Taron Egerton plays him so well. Where the character is a little so goofy and, uh, and kind of strange that it could have been a little... Like he was doing a shtick and he was playing a character. No, Egerton transformed in this character and you immediately buy into him as this as this guy that just wants to prove himself, that just wants to achieve his goal of being an Olympic athlete in any sport. And that's where he finds ski jumping because he can at least sort of do it because he's not an athlete in any sense of the word. And you're just rooting for him because he's such a good guy. He tr He's trying so hard. He just wants to succeed. And it's just such a great movie that you care about Eddie so much. I found myself getting teary-eyed and emotional so often through this movie and I did not expect to. And I don't even know if I want to admit that, but I am. And I, I finally bought this movie on Blu-ray because I loved it that much. So Eddie the Eagle is my number four movie of the year so far. All right, number three is a movie that is probably going to change the way movies are made going forward, and that's Jungle Book. This movie is incredible, both on on every forefront, but especially visually. John Favreau, who directed you know, Iron Man and Iron Man 2, he, he called this movie the most revolutionary movie in terms of visual effects, and he's not wrong. The only thing in this movie that's real is the kid that plays Mowgli. There's a few probably, you know, like a little grassy field here and there that they kind of created on a soundstage, but everything in this movie was on a soundstage. All the environments, the animals, everything is not real. It's all computer generated. And that's what blows my mind because you hear that concept and that could really make you worried about, oh no, this is going to look bad. What's going on? Everything looks so real. There's a couple times where the animals, would they jump or something, it looks a little off. But for the most part, they look, you believe animals can talk in this movie. The Jungle Book is one of those just beloved stories. And while I do remember sort of watching the cartoon growing up, I didn't remember much of it. And that was great going in because I didn't know exactly what to expect. The way they took the old story added upon it, changed a few things, but it still completely felt like Jungle Book. All the voice casts are incredible. Bill Murray as Baloo was my absolute favorite thing, and I just loved this movie from start to finish. It was so great. So that Jungle Book is my number three movie of the year so far. Number two is another movie that nobody saw, 
and everybody should have seen, and that's the nice guys. Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe doing things that they don't normally do, and that's venture into comedy. Directed by Shane Black, one of the most in-demand screenwriters in Hollywood, one of the most in-demand directors now. He directed The Nice Guys. This movie's so original and so funny. People complain, why doesn't Hollywood make any original movies anymore? They do. You guys just don't go and see them because nobody saw this movie. I had to drag a couple friends to see it, and they happened to love it. But I had to drag them to the theater. These are the kind of movies that we need to go and see. It's a nineteen seven based in the nineteen seventies. Ryan Gosling's uh, Private Eye. Russell Crowe's kind of like a a muscle man, kind of is going to go and send a message for you. They kind of get caught up in this this mystery sort of thing, and from there, it's it's just so funny. And it's not. This is my kind of humor. Where I can get over some kind of raunchy, ridiculous, stupid humor for them. I, I can enjoy that. But I love these where there's a real story. And it's just the way the characters are. Just how goofy they are. It's not The situations get a little crazy. But for the most part, it's still grounded. And you still get those emotional moments that make you care about the characters that much more. Which makes you laugh that much harder when something funny does happen. The way Shane Black uses the 1970s as a character in this movie is great. And I loved all the Detroit and Michigan shoutouts. That's great. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. So please go and see this movie when it's out on DVD or VOD or whatever. However you watch movies these days, make sure you check out The Nice Guys because it's my number two movie of the year, and I absolutely love it. Now, number one is a movie that nobody talked about. All of these shows I watch on YouTube, all of these reviewers, nobody saw this movie. And it's my number one movie of the year, and that's Eye in the Sky. Helen Mirren, Aaron Paul, and... Alan Rickman's last performance on screen. It tells a story of modern day warfare from basically the behind the camera lens of drones. It's all about how drones are used in warfare these days and who's really making that call and are morals being taken out of war because now it's just somebody more or less playing a video game, hitting a button and nobody cares anymore. That's what's so great about this movie and it, the way it cuts between, because you're cutting between like Hawaii and London and the U.S. and do between different war rooms, yet you never get lost. You know exactly what's going on, and it's the way this story is told by Gavin Hood, who is a, such a talented director, but always gets crapped on because he's the guy that did X-Men Origins Wolverine. Now, the studio probably is the main reason for that movie being such a train wreck, and I can't necessarily for well, I'll forgive him for the movie, but I can't say that it wasn't his fault at all. Definitely he had a part in it, but he comes back with Eye in the Sky and absolutely kills it. I, I teared up more than once watching this movie. I was so in. The tension is built so well. You care about these characters. Aaron Paul is the drone pilot, the guy behind it. The way he's dealing with these moral conflicts. Everything about this movie just had me locked in from instant and stuck with me after it. To this day, there's things that will happen. I'll see in the news on TV. And this movie will come to mind because of the themes they played with and the way they executed it all. Because it doesn't force an idea behind onto you or a solution to an idea it simply brings it up the characters in the movie address it but they leave it up to your own interpretation as well and that's such one of the great things about this movie and why i love it and why it's my number one movie of the year so there's my top five guys 10 clover field lane at five eddie the eagle number four jungle book number three the nice guys number two and eye in the sky number one now obviously there's probably two big movies a lot of you guys are saying why isn't that on your list that's Batman v Superman and Captain America Civil War. Batman v Superman for a bunch of reasons didn't quite make my list. I didn't hate it like a lot of people but it did let me down because my sky high expectations. I could go into it for hours about why it didn't make my list but it didn't. And Captain America Civil War I'm sure is a lot of people's like number one. I loved that movie. I had such a great time watching it but for whatever reason I think as crazy as this may sound I'm and I never thought I would say this, I think superhero fatigue had sort of set in when I saw it, and while I really enjoyed it, it didn't blow me away like some of these original movies on my list, so that's one of the reasons it didn't make it, and like I said, I love my five movies I just listed for you guys, so it was a little bit harder for me to squeeze something else on there and take one of these away, so those are my five movies, but now it's your turn, jump in the comments, let me know your five top movies of the year, and maybe why, maybe your argument for why it should have been on mine, and why it's on yours, I'd love to hear it. Maybe there's a movie that I didn't even think of or wasn't even considering that's on yours. That's the great thing about movies. We all have our own viewpoints and our own opinions. So I would love to see your guys' list. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at Neat Movie News for all the latest in the world of movie news. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see you back here next time.